Good evening, everybody. Beth Combs here with Canyon Community Yoga. Welcome to our Wednesday night class. Um, we're going to be doing about a 30 minute class and we'll be kind of doing some slow movement. Um, we'll be doing some standing poses and I've tried to minimize the number of props that we need um, just to make it a little bit easier for those of you who don't have props at home to be able to participate. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on our mats. So I'm going to step over to my mat here. And I'm using the microphone this evening. Um, so it, mostly because it's pretty windy tonight, um, I want you to be able to hear me. So unfortunately, you may or may not be able to hear. There are a ton of nuthatch nut hatches that have just taken over the backyard. So you might get to hear them um, this evening, but I just wanted to um, help us get grounded and centered, kind of focus on the first chakra tonight. That's our foundation. And uh, it really connects us with our root, the core of the earth and our feet ground us, our legs help support us. Um, and the first chakra is generally considered to be located um, at the tailbone. So you can actually put where your tailbone is on your back, the end of your spine. And I notice when I do that, I get an immediate grounding sensation. So um, I just, I like to use that as a tool for the times when, um, I'm just feeling really scattered or really anxious. Uh, it really can help me feel centered very quickly. So uh, that's just a technique to use uh, if you'd like. I know um, the world is crazy right now and people are feeling um, anxious and unsure of what to do next. So we're just gonna try to um, focus in instead of reflecting outward, which is important, um, especially with things that are going on. Um, with Black Lives Matter right now and trying to support Black and Indigenous people of color. But it's also important for us to do the internal work to recognize where we are in our own spiritual journey, our own process, and our own humanity. And I think it's really important to take those necessary steps before we begin to pivot outward and try to make a difference. Um, and so I think. We all need to be compassionate towards ourselves, be patient with ourselves, give ourselves the time and the space to reflect as needed um, as we go throughout our lives. So go ahead and um, we're gonna just sit in a seated cross-legged position. So if you're like me and your knees are up above your hips, you actually wanna try to sit up on something. So I've got a blanket that I've folded up pretty high uh, that I am sitting on right now. So um, you could also sit on a block. You could sit on a sofa cushion or a bolster of some type. So whatever you might have laying around or lying around. And so we wanna really connect with our sits bones into the mat or whatever it is we're sitting on. You can feel free to close your eyes here and kind of just listen to my voice. So I encourage you throughout the practice this evening, see if you can find your foundation. Maybe observe whether it feels steady or whether it feels uncertain or rocky or uneven. And I encourage you to just observe it and try not to attach any judgment to it. Sometimes I feel like I end up judging myself and then I'm judging the judging and it just becomes this cycle of judgment that doesn't do any good. I appreciate my yoga practice because it helps me come back to the now and the present moment and help me, it helps me detach um, some of the emotion and the energy that I might have um, with specific observations. Just kind of lets me be a lot more present in my life and in other parts of my life as I go throughout my day. For your hands, you can place them in your lap or you can flip the palms to face down and place them on your thighs or you could 
flip the palms up and face the sky, whatever your body might be craving this evening. So we wanna ground into our sits bones and then we wanna lengthen through the spine all the way out the crown of the head, almost like we have a string that's attached from the crown of the head all the way out to the ceiling or the sky. We're gonna to begin to lengthen our inhales and our exhales. And we'll take three rounds of breath where we inhale through the nose and then exhale out the mouth. And you can make the exhale as loud as you need it to be. One more time. You can go back to breathing normal. If you're feeling particularly anxious, you could continue to exhale through the mouth. This actually helps engage our parasympathetic nervous system, which is actually our rest and digest system. Otherwise, you can close the mouth and begin inhaling and exhaling through the nose. And we'll go ahead and blink the eyes open, or you can keep them closed. Um, so whatever your preference might be. We're gonna place our right hands on the mat. And we're gonna extend our left arm up alongside the left ear and then fold over to the right any amount. Maybe gaze up under that left arm. Inhale, come back up to center, and we'll switch sides. So right arm up alongside the ear, left arm down, fold to the left, maybe gaze up under that right arm. See if you can keep both of your sits bones still connected to the mat. And then we'll inhale and come back up to center. And then if you're seated on something, you can go ahead and move it out of the way. We're gonna come on to hands and knees on our mats. We'll do some cat cow and then some abdominal work here. So wrists underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. We've got our feet, tops of our feet are flat on the mat. We're gonna inhale and lift our tailbone and our forehead up to the sky. Exhale, pull the belly button back towards the spine. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, pull back. Inhale, come up. Exhale, pull back. Two more, following your own breath. And then we'll come back to a neutral position and give me just a second, I've got some camera issues going on here. So, ow, ooh, pine needles hurt <laughs> sometimes, okay. 
So we're going to come into our tabletop position. We're going to bring the right fingertips out in front, left toes back behind us on the mat. We're going to inhale. Then we'll exhale and we'll lift the right arm up alongside the right ear. Pull the belly button in towards the spine. Press the right shin down on the mat. And we'll exhale, lower everything down, and we'll switch sides. So left fingertips out in front, right toes back behind us. We'll take an inhale. Then we'll exhale, bring the left arm up alongside the left ear. Again, pull the belly button towards the spine, press through that back right heel, press the left shin down on the mat, press up through that right wrist so you're not sinking into the wrist. And then exhale, lower everything down. And then this next round, we're gonna do the same thing, but um, we're gonna actually lift the back leg if you'd like. If you're feeling a little tired or your low back might be a little tight, you can actually keep that leg on the mat. So right fingertips out in front, left toes back behind us. Inhale. Exhale, we'll lift the arm and the leg. Reach through those right fingertips, press through the left heel. Reaching in opposite directions. Pull the belly button towards the spine if you need stability. Then we'll exhale, lower everything down to the mat. Then we'll switch sides here. So left fingertips out in front, right toes back behind us. We'll take a nice big inhale through the nose. And then exhale, lift the left arm and the right leg. Press through the right heel, reach through those left fingertips. Then lower everything down to the mat. And then we'll go ahead and take a child's pose here. So we'll have the big toes touching, knees out as wide as the mat. We'll lengthen the arms out in front of us, keep the elbows lifted and lower the forehead onto the mat. You want your tailbone reaching toward the feet. And then we'll inhale, we'll come back to our tabletop position. And then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll take a downward facing dog here. So we're gonna walk the hands, palms distance in front of us, flip the toes so the bottoms of the toes are on the mat now, and then pull the hips up and back towards the sky. Feel free to pedal the feet here. This is a great way to stretch out our calf muscles. Especially if you've done any uphill activity this past week. We want our weight even between our hands and our feet. And we want our upper arms squeezing in towards our head, towards our ears. And then we'll step the feet up in between the hands. And we're going to just do a rag doll here. Feel free to clasp the elbows if you would like. You can also bend your knees if you're backs of your thighs, your hamstrings are really tight. Feel free to shake your head no and nod your head yes. Then we'll bend the knees and we'll inhale. We'll sweep the arms up and around. And then exhale the hands to heart center. 
So we're going to do just a few of our sun salutations here to get the body warmed up. So we'll inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale to fold forward. Inhale, lift the torso halfway up. Exhale, we're going to lower down to our tabletop position. So hands flat on the mat, knees on the mat, lower the torso down. And then you're going to pull the tailbone towards the heels and inhale the torso up into cobra. And then exhale, come back to tabletop and then pull back to downward facing dog. Again, feel free to walk the dog here. And then we'll inhale, we'll step the feet up in between the hands. And then inhale, lift the torso halfway up. Exhale to fold forward. Inhale, sweep the arms up and around. Exhale the hands to heart center. So we'll do that just a few more times. I don't know why. Sorry, my camera is not cooperating very well today. <laughs> Whoops. Let's get this one fixed too. <sighs> I think the wind is knocking my camera around a little bit here. Okay, we'll inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift the torso halfway up. Exhale, we're gonna plant the hands, lower down to tabletop, and then torso all the way down to the mat. Pull the tailbone towards the heels. Inhale, the torso up into cobra. Exhale, pull the hips back to downward facing dog. Again, feel free to pedal the feet out here. Remember to breathe in downward facing dog. And you can always take child's pose if it's a little too much for you to hold in downward facing. And then we'll step the feet up to the top of the mat. We'll inhale the torso halfway up. Exhale, fold forward. Again, feel free to bend the knees here. Inhale, sweep the arms up and around. Exhale, the hands to heart center. And we'll go one more time here. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift the torso halfway up. Exhale, lower down to tabletop position and all the way to the mat. Pull the tailbone towards the heels. Inhale up to Cobra or upward facing dog with the legs lifted off the mat. Exhale, pull back to downward facing dog. You can go through tabletop if you need to. Step the feet up in between the hands. Inhale to lift the torso halfway up. Exhale, fold forward. Again, feel free to bend your knees as you inhale, sweep the arms up and around, and exhale the hands to heart center. So we'll take a moment in mountain or Tadasana pose here. Feel free to bend the knees if you need. We want the weight even between all four corners of our feet. And we kind of want everything in alignment. So we actually want our legs to feel nice and strong, like there's roots growing out of our heels to the center of the earth. We want to pull our front hip bones and our frontal rib points together. So kind of like a mini crunch. Another way to get this is to pull the tailbone down towards the heels. You want your shoulders back. You don't want them up by your ears, allowing the arms down by the sides, and your neck is nice and long. Again, with that feeling like you've got a string pulling the crown of your head towards the sky.
Notice if you feel any sensations in your legs. Notice if you feel more connected to the earth or whatever it is you might be standing on. Notice if you feel like you're spinning even more, if you feel a little dizzy, just observe whatever is coming up for you. And then we'll go ahead and set up in our tree pose. So um, for me, I wanna make sure I'm in the, kind of in the center of my mat, just to give me a little more space in case I fall forward or backwards. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and ground through that right heel. So really feel that connection uh, like roots, like tree roots just going into the center of the earth. You're gonna firm the upper right hip in towards the midline of the body. So you really wanna kinda of tighten that gluteus muscle, the butt muscle. And once you feel pretty stable there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the left heel and we're just gonna place it as a kickstand on the uh, right above the ankle of the right leg. And we'll just begin here. So you wanna gaze about 10 feet in front of you. You wanna pull the belly button in towards the spine to engage the abdominal muscles and help stabilize you. If you're feeling pretty balanced and you'd like a little bit more, you can bring the leg fully up onto the right shin, right calf. Again, continue to gaze about 10 feet in front of you. You can also bring the sole of the left foot all the way up to the right thigh but just avoid the knee area. So you don't want it right here. You either want it up above or down below the knee. And again, we're gonna gaze about 10 feet in front of us. We're gonna bring the hands to prayer. Notice how you feel in this pose. Notice if you get upset with yourself, if you lose your balance and you have to put your foot down or take a break. See if you can show yourself a little bit more patience and compassion. If your body doesn't seem to want to hold the pose the way you want it to or the way you think it should. Now on your next inhale, go ahead and release everything down to the mat. We'll go ahead and shake the legs out. And then we're gonna switch sides here. So left foot, ground that down through the mat. Again, firm that left hip into the midline. Really um, engage that gluteus muscle. And then we're gonna bring the right heel onto our left leg. Again, we're gonna gaze about 10 feet in front of us to help give us something to focus on. Pull the belly button in towards the spine. If you want to try going a little bit further, you can bring the right foot up onto the left calf, the left shin. And this time I'm gonna do cactus arms or goal posts to really open up the collarbones after working on the computer all day. And then we'll fold the arms down and we'll release the foot to the mat. Go ahead and shake your legs out again. And we'll do just a couple more standing poses here before we turn into Shavasana. So we're gonna go ahead and turn to face the sideways, the long edge of the mat. We're gonna step the feet about three to four feet apart. We'll pick up the right heel and move it away from us. Pick up the left toes, rotate them out. We want our pelvis pointing towards the back right corner of our mat. 
We're going to lock the pelvis in place with our hands, and then we're going to twist just the torso back to the long edge of the mat. We want a lot of energy, straight leg, straight right leg back here. We want the outer edge of the right foot sealed on the mat. Take an inhale, and on your next exhale, go ahead and bend that left knee, and we'll bring the arms up to a T for warrior two pose. So you want the weight even between both of your feet. So you don't want to be leaning forward or leaning too far back. And you want to spread wide across the collarbones and gaze down that middle finger. And then we'll flip the left palm to face the sky and we'll bring the torso back and the right hand just gently placed on that right thigh. We don't want a lot of weight here for reverse warrior. And then we'll inhale, we'll come back to warrior two and then go ahead and straighten that left knee. You can turn the feet parallel and then feel free to step the feet together. Go ahead and shake the knees out and we'll switch sides here. So this time we're going to step the feet three to four feet apart. Pick up the left heel, move it away, pick up the right toes, rotate them out. Check in with our pelvis. We want it pointing towards the upper left corner of the mat. And then we're going to rotate just the torso back to the long edge. Take a nice big inhale, and then on your next exhale, we're gonna bend that right knee and bring the arms up to a T once again. So we wanna really stretch wide across the collarbone, gaze down that middle finger, make sure the weight is even between the left and the right foot. Notice if we get distracted in this pose and we lose some of the strength in our legs, try to keep your focus going. Then we'll flip the right palm and come back to reverse warrior. You can lightly place those left fingertips on the left thigh. Then we'll inhale, come back to center, and then we'll straighten that right knee. Bring the feet parallel. You can step the feet together. Go ahead and shake the legs out. And then we're going to do a wide-legged forward fold, so you can step the feet out three to four feet apart once again. Actually, we'll do a goddess pose real quick, so we're going to actually bring the heels in and turn the toes outwards and I usually need to bring my legs in to two to three feet apart instead of three to four feet apart so we're gonna exhale and lower the knees the thighs uh, towards the mat we want the knees tracking right above those ankles and we'll inhale, sweep the arms up. Bring the hands down to heart center as we lower the knees again. Inhale as we sweep the arms up and stand up. Exhale the hands to heart center, lower the knees down. Inhale, stand up with the arms up. Exhale, lower down, hands to heart center. Inhale, sweep the arms up. One more time, we're going to exhale, lower down into a squat, hands at heart center. And then we'll inhale, sweep the arms up, and come back to heart center. Then we'll bring the feet parallel. You can actually step them together real quick and shake them out if you need a little breather, a little break for your legs. And then we're going to keep the feet parallel here. 
place your hands on your hips. You're going to reach your heart up towards the sky. Inhale and then exhale and fold forward any amount. So again, you can bend your knees here if you need to, if your hamstrings are tight. You could place your hands on blocks or books if you need. Can allow the crown of the head to reach toward the mat, towards the floor. Remember to breathe here. Then you can place your hands back on your hips. Inhale and then exhale. Use the strength of your legs to bring your torso back up. And then we'll go ahead and we'll set up on the mat. Sit down. We'll take a quick butterfly pose. Actually, we'll do a forward fold instead. So legs extended out in front of us, feet flexed. We're gonna inhale, bring the arms up and exhale to fold forward. And we'll inhale, bring the arms back up, lower them down on the sides. And then we'll go ahead and lay down for our Shavasana or corpse pose. So we lay down flat on our backs. And if you've got any tightness in your low back, um, you can roll up a blanket and place it under your knees or you can place the blanket under your head like a pillow. So whatever you need to do to make yourself as comfortable as possible. This is our resting pose. It's the most important pose of class, in my opinion. You can lay with your feet splayed out, your arms out at about a 45 degree angle, or you could do cactus arms if you wanted to. If your low back is really, really tight, you can actually place the feet on the outer edge of the mat and bring the knees together. That should actually take quite a bit of that pressure off. So again, check in with your body. What do you need at this time in your practice? Just allow yourself to settle into your mat. Allow the earth to support you fully. Might notice feeling like you're melting into the mat. That's okay. Just allow that sinking, releasing feeling. And I'll let you know when it's time to come out of the pose.
Take a few breaths here. Begin to lengthen your inhales and your exhales and roll over to your right side. Bring yourself up to a comfortable seated position. You can bring your hands together at heart center. Maybe close your eyes. Notice the efforts that you've put into your practice this evening. Notice the strength and the courage that you've gained from your practice this evening. Notice if you were able to drop or release any attachment to judgment that you might have had. And if not, see if you can give yourself patience and space to try again at another time. May the compassion, the love, and the light in me honor the compassion, the love, and the light in you. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Namaste.